from our studios in the heart of Silicon Valley, Palo Alto, California. This is a CUBE Conversation. Hello everyone, welcome to this CUBE Conversation here in Palo Alto, California. I have remote Sarah Varney, who's the Chief Marketing Officer at Twilio, a company we've covered for many, many years, one of the most successful API, now public company. Um, Sarah, welcome to theCUBE Conversation. Good to see you uh, remotely. You're in San Francisco, we're in Palo Alto. Uh, good, thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. So you guys have been really a powerhouse company, Twilio. We've been following the rise and success. It just seems just success after success after success, go public, stock keeps growing. Big acquisition with SendGrid for $2 billion in October, we covered that. But really kind of reading the tea leaves and connecting the dots, it's really the, the continued evolution of cloud, SaaS, where APIs are becoming more and more the lingua franca for the next generation wave that's coming, but it's going into a whole nother direction. You guys are a big part of that. You're the chief marketing officer. It's a hard story to tell because it's, it's kind of under the hood, nerdy, but it's also really big business benefits. Uh, so as the CMO, how do you get your arms around that? Uh, you've been in the business for a while. Take a minute to, to explain the strategy around how you're handling the Twilio uh, marketing. Sure, yeah, I mean, I do, I agree that, uh, you know, Twilio is very much an ingredient brand, but at the same time, um, everyone is interacting with Twilio in some shape or form, probably every day, whether or not they, they realize it or not. Uh, if you're getting an appointment reminder from your dentist confirming an appointment, that's probably Twilio behind the scenes. If you are um, communicating with your Uber driver to say that you are uh, headed outside, that is normally powered by Twilio technology. So even though uh, it might be a, a, a technology that exists lower in the stack and something you might not um, physically see, uh, it is very much something that people everywhere are using every day. Uh, and you know, our goal really as Twilio is to, to make sure that we're helping companies across the globe from all different types of industries of all shapes and sizes uh, to bridge the communication gap with their customers. Uh, you know, every day there's a new channel to keep up to speed with. There's a new way that people are, are customers that are, are demanding to uh, be communicated with. And we want companies to be out in front of that uh, so that, you know, they can connect with their customers on any channel. If that's WhatsApp, if that's SMS, if that's voice, if that's even fax, yeah. uh, we want to make that a, a possibility. Yeah, I love the positioning cloud communications company. That's kind of what you guys are core. Because um, you're, you're bringing it all together. And I think, you know, the mobile revolution starting with the iPhone in 2007, you look at that as a seminal moment and you say, okay, mobile device, it's a phone, it's a computer, it's got applications on it. This is a device that's unique to, to the rest of the infrastructure, but developers are you're programming on it. And those things all integrate together. That's where a lot of people kind of saw that for the first time. Then you add cloud to it, Amazon, Microsoft, and Google, the top three Amazon dominating really kind of brings the API focus even more to make these services, these web services, go to a whole nother level. Uh, and, and that's the big wave that we're seeing. I'd love to get your thoughts, and, and, and you worked at salesforce.com, which really pioneered SaaS, and they were the first real cloud company before you started to see Amazon, real cloud infrastructure as a service, so, uh, platform as a service, and software as a service evolve. You were there early, you had a lot of experience working with App Exchange, app, app stores, early on at Salesforce. How does that compare to now? What is the trajectory and how does it all connect? Yeah, I mean, I think when I, I, you know, my joke is always that when I started on the App Exchange at Salesforce, the Apple App Store didn't even exist. So the explosion of mobile devices was just, we weren't even, we weren't even there quite yet. And I was working with the ISVs to, uh, to help them uh, think about how they could launch big businesses in the cloud. Uh, and I think at that point, uh, people were, were rotating hard away from the world of on-premise, which required a ton of investment from a hardware perspective and services perspective. And in the process of that, rotated very, almost uh, overcorrected towards package solutions. And I think over the last few years, what we've seen and, and something that Twilio is definitely behind and you can see in the vision of our, of our product roadmap is coming back to the middle where uh, you have the benefits of the cloud, the speed, the ability to stand something up very quickly, uh, but you also have unlimited customization ability and you can really put uh, that uh, the ability to build powerful applications that bring the best of, of different solutions uh, and different applications through APIs in the hands of, of your developers. I think uh, that's, and ultimately, sorry, go ahead. I think that's a great point. I want to just um, double down on that for a second and ask you, 
um, how you guys are seeing the developer traction on this because one of the core things that we've been reporting over the past couple of years, this year in particular, is the rise of things like Kubernetes, cloud native, where developers now have a seamless way to program the infrastructure, the, the hard stuff. So you're seeing a faster development cycle for those application developers. Is that where the customization piece comes in? Is that where you guys see that connection point? And what does that mean for customers? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think that's part of it, but at a higher level, we really want to empower developers to create a custom, a connected journey across all different, you know, parts of how a customer is interacting with a brand. You know, if you think about, I, I had a recent incident with an airline that'll remain nameless, but I, lost, I left my laptop on uh, a plane, and to get that laptop back took multiple calls to uh, the customer service desk. I was bounced around to a bunch of different people. Um, the tracking of that computer was near impossible. At one point it traveled from New Jersey to Ireland. Uh, you know, there was just so many different points of that journey where there was disconnection and I began to lose trust in this, the ability of this customer service department. Uh, you know, if this, this company had an API based approach, they could bring all the data from these different systems, from their ERP, from their CRM, um, you know, from their shipping vendor all in one place. And I wouldn't have had that, that experience uh, with that particular airline. So you see APIs as a data connector model, really connecting data sets together fast and easy. I do, I think it's a way, I, and I think developers love working in APIs because they can bring all the, they can pick the best of breed solutions and bring all that data into one uh, customer, you know, united customer experience so that your customer doesn't have to do that heavy lifting, it's all there for them. You know, one of the things you see from companies like Salesforce pioneering the uh, early days of SaaS and cloud, I mean, Andy Jassy at Amazon many times and he always uses the expression that they use in Amazon called, you, got, you have to be misunderstood for a long time if you want to be a leader in an emerging new market. You guys at Twilio kind of have done that and continue to surpass expectations because you've been kind of skating to where the puck is now, which is the cloud native wave, third party applications, IOT security, all kind of come together for developers. So as a company that's been different and been disruptive, as the CMO, how do you take that, uh, that, that vision and, and mantra to the next level as you market the solution because you are kind of different. You are not new per se, but you're a new way to create value for customers. How do you go out and tell that story? What are some of the, the marketing things that you do um, to take that Twilio to the next level? Uh, I mean, I personally, in my experience, I think uh, it, the easiest marketing jobs are the ones where you have amazing customer stories. And there is no shortage of amazing uh, innovation in our customer base. Uh, and, you know, I think if you think about the companies that are making the news, if that's Lyft, if that's, um, you know, companies like Airbnb, they're not, if you think about their business, they're not uh, inventing something brand new. The, you know, Uber didn't invent the taxi, uh, Airbnb didn't invent a hotel room, but they invented a new way to consume their product, to communicate around their product. And, uh, you know, I think it, it's very easy to show the power of Twilio and how we've evolved through some of these, these customer stories. And it's not just the kind of Silicon Valley, fast growing, uh, you know, startups that we're all familiar with here, just, just living and being located in the region. But you know, we're starting to see this more and more in the enterprise as well, uh, and people really harnessing communication to make sure that, that they themselves are not disrupted. Yeah, of course, we love that the enterprise hot, we've been doing it for 10 years now, everyone talks enterprise, because the confluence of consumerization of IT is happening, it's, the lines are blurring. Share some um, customer successors, because I think this is a great, great example of just great marketing, let the customers do the talking for you. I mean, you always got to do the, you know, the standard operational things and have some a tech stack and all that good stuff, but at the end of the day, when you have your customers sharing their success, that's really the ultimate testimonial. Uh, so share some cool examples of um, notable customers if you can. Yeah, we have a, I mean, we have a wide range, I'll tell you three. Uh, Medtronic, you know, one of the largest medical device companies uh, in the world, uh, they provide a solution for type 1 diabetes. They provide a pump that is constantly monitoring the glucose levels in someone's blood. Uh, what they've done with Twilio is now they're layering on messaging capabilities. So uh, if someone's glucose levels fall to a level that's unsafe, they can be uh, messaged and 
you know, that's not just for the patient, but if you think of a young child who suffers from uh, type 1 diabetes, this can be a very stressful situation for their parents and their caregiving team. And now that team can constantly be in the loop and they don't have to worry if they are at work and wondering, you know, how their child is doing at school or, you know, if they are uh, on the soccer field and concerned about, you know, how uh, their condition could be affected by them, you know, participating in that sport. Uh, so completely different from your, you know, more um, uh, you know, straight down the middle uh, startup that we see here in the Valley. So um, basically messaging is the key value. It's not so much a tech thing, it's more of the outcome. It's a critical service piece to have those kind of real time communication. Yes, absolutely. Because I mean, if you think about it, monitoring your, uh, your uh, glucose levels, that's not a new phenomenon. People have been doing that for years, but layering on communications on top of this has brought a real-time element to uh, monitoring this, uh, this condition and um, has liberated people with this condition so that you know, they can get back to the things that they've always wanted to do without having to worry uh, about you know, the state of, of their health. It's like, um, it's like infrastructure as code for DevOps. You guys are for communications. You make it easy to do that for things like that. Talk about the impact of scale over the years. Because now, you know, we're seeing the data tsunami happen every day. IoT devices are coming on. Everything's got a, a, a sensor on it. You got doorbells, you got everything out there now. It's, it's got an IP address and connected in that could potentially be a messaging unit of, of data. This is just getting massive. How you guys see scale and, 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 and how are you guys getting around the next wave on that, that piece? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the, the huge benefits in um, working with Twilio is our super network. So we are constantly uh, maintaining relationships with all of the key carriers across the globe to make sure that we can get deliver our, to our customers uh, the best routes. And so uh, that means also that they can you know, stand up business virtually anywhere across the globe uh, as they're entering new markets. And IoT, this is especially true for anyone who um, is in the IoT space. Uh, if you think about the the dockless category, companies like Lime, uh, who are you know delivering uh, uh, rental bike services, uh, where and you know a market where market share, just grabbing as much market share as possible, uh, it seems to be the name of the game. They're able to partner with Twilio, embed SIM cards in all of their bicycles, and now be able to uh, you know track uh, all of those um, all of those bicycles across the globe as well as uh, scooters. Uh, and then take that information, uh, figure out how customers are engaging uh, with their product and ultimately build a better solution long-term. Real-time messaging will never go away as value as I see, just like data, so it's going to get faster and larger amounts of messaging, making sense of it, do the heavy lifting. It's a great story, you guys uh, um, have done a great job. Sir, thanks for coming on and sharing your perspective. Get the plug-in for Twilio real quick. What's new with the company, employees, obviously, the public companies, so you really can't talk about futures, but what's sure. on your plate? What's on the horizon for Twilio? What's the update? Yeah, I mean, the company is growing extremely quickly. We're really uh, excited about uh, the contact center market, especially we launched our Flex contact center solution. Uh, uh, it was made generally available just this past October. Uh, and uh, as you've mentioned, we're super excited to welcome SendGrid into the family of products uh, and to you know, really round out our full uh, set of communication APIs so people can communicate with their customers in any way possible. And I would be, uh, I, it would be a crime for me not to mention our user conference coming up uh, this August, August 6th and 7th at Moscone West, and that's called Signal. Uh, so I highly encourage you to attend. Uh, it's a great opportunity to hear from experts in the communication space and also our customers. Well, we love the name Signal, extracting the signal from the noise was our original kind of tagline, really appreciate it. And with all those customers, uh, must be a hard challenge to, have a customer conference doing the keynote selections and figuring out uh, what to do. What, are you going to have breakout sessions? Just give a little more detail on the event. You're going to see the stage and customer stories. There's going to be breakout sessions. What's the format for the event? Yeah, so it's a, it's a two day um, uh, session at Moscone West. We have a number of breakouts. We have uh, hands-on training, which we call super class. Uh, we have uh, keynotes last year. We had an uh, interactive performance with the band OK Go. Uh, we had the creators of Westworld on stage. Uh, Jeff Lawson, uh, our CEO, always kicks it off. Uh, and it's just a great, exciting two days. 
Uh, and um, we also this year, given that we're uh, hosting it during the summer time frame, we have uh, a camp experience for your children if you're uh, looking to combine it with a, a summer vacation. So we're super excited about Signal. It's uh, it's uh, two of my favorite days of the year from a, a Twilio perspective, and I'd love for everyone to come join us. Well, you got a great customer uh, success over the years and great names. Congratulations, Sarah. Thanks for spending the time here in theCUBE. I'm John Furrier here in Palo Alto. Sarah Varney, the Chief Marketing Officer with Twilio in San Francisco via remote. Um, thanks for watching this CUBE conversation. <laughs>